So this mind science tutorial is on the line in the unicorn. So we felt uh, that we would be able to give you guys the best version of this if we were to focus the primary intention of line and unicorn, uh, the application of the information towards relationship. Everything you're learning in the tutorials and everything that we're sharing with these guys you know, can be applied in many different ways, but I feel that the Lion Unicorn work is best applied uh, and best sort of used as a tool within the realm of relationship. It's a little bit uh, different than, say, necessary versus unnecessary, which could be applied in, you know, in any condition. It could be in the way that you're, you know, just simply showing up for work that day. This has got a lot more to do with interpersonal relationships. So, uh, Malay and I are going to break down the conversation for you guys today uh, and, and unpack it and, you know, basically uh, sort of first describe the work and then we're going to talk about uh, how the work can be applied, you know, used as a tool for you in your relationship. So the first thing to understand, this work came from Dr. Mark Waller. Uh, he's a friend of mine who wrote a really fun book called The Dance of the Lion and the Unicorn. I found that book, read it, felt compelled to make it a part of our curriculum because it's a really fun and interesting way to look at human beings, uh, their temperament. It's the study of temperament and he did a great job of making it very accessible by creating these two characters and understanding how these two characters behave and using couples as a way to sort of flush out the behavior of the characters because he's a couples therapist which so which is really the way he's experiencing the behavior of each of these characters uh, there's probably no better place to look at our our behavior patterns our tendencies than in interpersonal relationships specifically relationships of a romantic nature you know they could, of course they could be uh, child parent they can be brother sister they can be friend but they are they are most um, they're most transparent when it is typically a couple and you're in a romantic relationship so let's take a let's, let's first of all take uh, a look at how we would describe a lion. So I'm going to let Malayne, uh I'm going to invite you to go ahead and, uh, you know, break down your interpretation mm -hmm. of uh, and description of a lion's temperament. Um, a lion has obviously different faces. This is also, I think, why why Cameron mentioned interpretation because I think a lion can have, uh, let's say. A specific temperament and then there's also personality traits and conditioning so one important first uh, trait in the temperament of a lion is a reactivity that is a little bit more fiery than let's say now compared to unicorn so because both of them have a reaction to a person or situation but the situation will ignite some fire in a lion. So the lion will probably be outspoken about the frustration. The lion will be uh, someone who is then also actually looking for a relief in that situation uh, through communication uh, or even of some physical nature. Um, so I think to me, if I really have to put it in, in a nutshell, it's, it's a reactivity that is visible and visible in a big manner. Uh, and visible for a unicorn would be also something that someone would obviously be able to see in the sense of a retreating. So the lion in that sense then is someone who goes after and approaches and finds the relief and resolution in a certain sense. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a great way to actually phrase it. They find relief mm -hmm. from their tension mm -hmm. in the approach. Yes. And by approach meaning moving forward. Yes. They need to resolve this situation immediately. They need to have clarity right away. 
they they want to get this they want to get this tension out of them and they typically do it by releasing it either verbally through the mm -hmm. through conversation or emotionally by releasing some you know by having a big emotional reaction mm -hmm. or by getting relief by getting the situation maybe talked out and resolved so mm -hmm. that they are emotionally feeling uh, safe again. So I think, uh, you know, I really like the way that you phrase that, that they're, they're in pursuit of relief. Yes. Both the lion and the unicorn are clearly in pursuit of relief. The unicorn pursues relief a different way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that we want to really be able to unpack and, and talk about is how each of these characters is actually achieving relief mm -hmm. from their personal tension. Mm -hmm. And the lion's relief, as you said, is going to come by chasing it down. They're going to, in a way, oftentimes demand relief. And when they yeah. don't get relief, mm -hmm. if, they don't, if, if they don't receive cooperation when they do demand relief, mm -hmm. this further exacerbates the situation. It, oh, yeah, it, it, it creates more anger. And it oftentimes, and this is why Mark called it the dance of the lion. The unicorn is, there's a chasing. Mm -hmm. If the unicorn runs away and avoids giving the requested relief to the lion, mm -hmm. the lion just chases more mm -hmm. to get it because mm -hmm. now they're being rejected, mm -hmm. which is a really big issue for lions. They don't like to be rejected. They, you know, they, they care very much about acceptance. And, and they care about acceptance because they're so used to interacting with the world externally mm -hmm. and therefore they're used to achieving acceptance and and if you will approval so, i would even say right approval, yes. great interchangeable acceptance mm -hmm. and approval but a great term approval they're they're used to cultivating approval mm -hmm. through relationships mm -hmm. and through external communication mm -hmm. and that's quite different and it's in contrast to the unicorn's approach mm -hmm. which is to achieve the same result but through a, a more internal process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they don't look for external uh, approval mm -hmm. they don't look to be typically celebrated externally though they do of course like every human seeks a certain amount of approval mm -hmm. i i think that one of the big distinctions between these two guys and as you guys are trying to figure out you know who you know as you're listening am i a lion am i a unicorn mm -hmm. reading the book is going to help a lot it's very important but talking it out a bit is really crucial because sometimes we don't really know ourselves through the eyes of another person. We know how we see ourselves through our own internal, you know, uh, vision, mm -hmm. but we're not really oftentimes very aware of how other people see us. So having conversations around the topic is also very interesting, but I would say that, you know, coming back again to the lion, I think one of the best qualities of the lion is that the lion is also comfortable externalizing and communicating their thoughts and their feelings. And they, they, there's a willingness in the lion to talk about how they feel. They want to get it out. They want to have oh, yeah. a conversation. It's not just the willingness. I think it's, it's, it's an urge, it's a need uh, to, yeah. to express uh, their own emotions and to make sure that the other person is aware uh, of how I am feeling in that moment because that gives me a certain validation that you a, heard me, that you feel for me, that you uh, value me, and which goes back to the conversation or the point you just made about feeling accepted, feeling loved, feeling approved by someone else. Uh, which is what they are seeking in that moment, in that exchange. And here's the question, when does that become a problem? 
always. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, this is the thing. It, be it, yeah, it becomes a problem when there's this need for it. The neediness. The, yeah. The, mm -hmm. the, the, when someone is seeking relief mm -hmm. and they, they cannot generate relief for themselves, mm -hmm. with themselves and by themselves, they need the relief via another person. Mm -hmm. This is one of the probably the weakest qualities of of a lion and can get out of control. Because mm -hmm. again, what's important to understand is the qualities that we're talking about right now are on a scale. Mm -hmm. You can be more or less, uh, these qualities can be more or less exaggerated. Mm -hmm. You can, you can be a very expressive lion or you can be a relatively quiet lion. Mm -hmm. It's not an example of that is you and I. Mm -hmm. I'm very outspoken and I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm, I typically externalize all my thoughts and my frustrations and, you know, my, my, my general uh, internal condition is usually easy to see because I externalize it. You, on the other hand, are more reserved. You're typically more quiet, and a lot of people actually mistake you for being a unicorn once we start breaking down this yes, world. Yes, and I, I actually did myself. When I read the book the first time, which is now almost six years ago, I classified myself as a unicorn, which goes back to what I said earlier, personality and conditioning, because my father is a massive lion, I learned to shut down my lion with him. And I learned to be very selective about how I show up in a certain environment. However, I know that I do show up consistently as a lion in my closest relationships, which is what you said earlier. We really see who we are in the moments and with the people who are familiar to us, who do spend a lot of time with us, and we do spend a lot of time with them and are around them. So there I could see that my internal reaction, which is the, the biggest distinction, it's my internal reaction is to attack, which I think is also a very important trait or uh, distinguish, distinguishing element between unicorn and lion. Lion attacks and the unicorn is a little bit more defensive, I would say. Well, they're typically passive aggressive passive aggressive in their, for sure you know in on the negative side of the scale yes. whereas a lion on the negative side of the scale is aggressive aggressive yes yes <laughs> the unicorn is passive aggressive yeah and so both of these temperaments need to be working towards being in the middle mm -hmm. which ends up being assertive being mm -hmm. assertive is a quality that both are in need of yeah but ten, but we tend to, if we're, if we're exaggerated in some of our habits, we tend to either go towards more aggression or more passive aggressive mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, it's easy for people to misdiagnose or mis, mm -hmm. mis um, perceive, perceive yeah. sort of the qualities, uh, their own behavior, mm -hmm. their, you know, the the the, the descriptors. Uh, you know, they, they do misperceive and they tend to see themselves sometimes as a unicorn because, as you said, they're around a bigger lion and so mm -hmm. they tend to be quieter and so they're, mm -hmm. oh, well, I, I must, because I don't react to my father that way, mm -hmm. I must be an avoider. Mm -hmm. I must be more towards the unicorn side, which again is not accurate it really comes down to how you behave when you feel your absolute safest mm -hmm. and when you feel uh, your absolute freest. Mm -hmm. It's when you start, when the container gets quite restrictive, it, it will shape the way you react. Mm -hmm. But what we're talking about is how do you react when there are, you know, there's literally no restraints. Yeah. There, there are no conditions that would limit you from being completely and fully you what is your first reaction internal yes yeah. it, it's 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 an it's a limbic reaction mm -hmm. what it occurs is when the limbic system takes over of course you immediately move into the emotional mm -hmm. part of the brain or the mind and you immediately react mm -hmm. 
in a direction that is for your personal safety. You know, the safety for the lion is to is is approach. It's forward. It's fight. The the safety for the unicorn is flight. It's flee. It could even be freeze. Mm -hmm. But the typical reaction is is one or the other. So sometimes people are like, oh, you know, I think I'm a lion. Sometimes I'm a unicorn. It's not necessarily uh, going to be easy for you to make that distinction if you simply go by how you react with different people in your life. Mm -hmm. You have to actually sit down and observe how you feel in a moment where you feel unsafe or triggered. Mm -hmm. And once you sort of witness how you feel and you see that that keeps replicating itself, it keeps showing up over and over again, then you start to get a, a, a pattern. And that mm -hmm. pattern is how you determine whether your nature is to fight or flight on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And again, you don't want to base it on just one relationship mm -hmm. or how it is at work versus how it is at home. It's really how you are in terms of your first initial response yes. to stress, to, to, to something mm -hmm. that triggers you, mm -hmm. to some fear state, mm -hmm. and that's crucial. So now, what are the positive, because I was starting to talk about them, but let's keep flushing this out. What are the positive qualities of a lion? Positive qualities. As I said, one mm -hmm. of them is they are comfortable speaking in person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and they, I would say, are comfortable to navigate different emotional states, which I think oftentimes a unicorn has a hard time not just to express their emotions, but actually be in tune with their emotions. Um, so I think a lion brings that quality of being able to yeah, have a full spe spectrum of emotions that, in my opinion, make life a little richer. Uh, Spoken like a true lion. <laughs> yes, I love the drama. <laughs> but um, the drama is good because the drama reminds me also, uh, it's pain and pleasure. It's, it's the suffering and the joy. They, they go hand in hand. But also, as you said, the goal, the ultimate goal, is really finding a state of where, where, where we're balancing between these places and we don't get addicted to just being in pleasure or just being in pain. Because I think this is now taking a little uh, exit very quick to what is not good for a lion is being addicted maybe to uh, the drama, the drama mm -hmm. which brings you constantly back into relationships of drama and well, you just replicate yeah. that same uh, drama with different people well, well one of the great dangers of any quality is it always has a counterbalancing quality mm -hmm. so if you are a really um you know outspoken person one of the counterbalancing qualities of being you know outspoken is you can become uh, addicted to the sensation of being heard, mm -hmm. and this this uh, counter position, uh, you know, of of and, and I say counterbalancing because it's you know if if I'm if I'm extremely if I'm extremely outspoken. And being outspoken becomes something that I'm in need of. Mm -hmm. That that then w what happens is, uh, you know, I'm now somehow caught between these two points, and they're they're constantly playing at each other because what used to be a, an asset, mm -hmm. which is I'm speaking and mm -hmm. I'm and and I'm. I'm, I'm comfortable speaking and I'm able to speak and I'm used to speaking so my words flow and mm -hmm. I can express myself quite easily is now counterbalanced with this need and this addiction to it and all the things that it creates mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't want to say that this is <laughs> this is balanced in a quote unquote you know successful way I'm really suggesting that it is it is creating uh, you know, the, it's creating a, a, a counter 
shadow position, mm -hmm. if you will, that then that then um, becomes in a way the 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 dark and the light. So the light is this is not a bad thing for me to be out for me to be able to speak and mm -hmm. shoot, but the dark is you know me doing it for the wrong reasons yeah so that's what i mean by it's it's counterbalance mm -hmm. um it's it's polar other side it's not because you could say oh well it's talking a lot the polar opposite side of that is just being really super quiet mm -hmm. uh, i'm not i'm not really going in that direction mm -hmm. with the with the 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 description i'm actually going with you know how one thing can serve you or it can destroy you. hurt you or just you, you or know, others yeah and, and so yeah mm -hmm. so it's it's like it's there's a carefulness that the lion must bring to in a critical thinking that the lion must bring at all times to their life where they're being critical of themselves they're mm -hmm. being critical of their reactivity they're being critical of their decisions and their reactions and they're mm -hmm. actually willing to look at them and say you know is that necessary mm -hmm. is that unnecessary am mm -hmm. i being because with that kind of personality and that kind of reactive well excuse me with that kind of reactivity not personality mm -hmm. but if that kind of they have that kind of reactivity and then they have a big personality on mm -hmm. top of that they can find themselves really being you know a super um you know, over, overwhelming kind of individual. Because imagine you've got a big personality, plus you're, you know, you need to be heard, you need to be spoken. You can be a very... You're talking about yourself? I, I'm, I'm describing <laughs> someone that sounds a lot like me. I think I know someone uh, like that. But, but, but yeah, you're, what you can <laughs> run into is that you can become, you know, your worst enemy. So you really have to be self-critical. Well, self-critical is to me the work that we're doing here. I mean, it's essentially you looking at you and how you're behaving. What is motivating your behavior? Uh, are you in your limbic brain? Are you very emotional and reactive? Or are you actually doing the personal work to see a situation more objective and step out of it as an observer instead of being in it and getting dragged into the drama again and the reactivity on either side well, because a, a unicorn in in his or her reactivity can create a lot of pain too in in the, their partners because 100%. when you cut someone out or you're cold uh, it's also not fun to be around that person no so, no and these mm -hmm. are these are people can easily become addicted to patterns of behavior mm -hmm. They can become addicted to drama. They can become addicted to, you know, ex excitement. They can become yeah. addicted to quiet. But coming back to, because we seem to keep leaving the qualities <laughs> that are really great qualities of the lion. I have one. I have okay. one. Based on what I said about feeling all the emotions, I think that makes a lion very empathetic. Okay. I think a lion can really feel for someone else because they know how it feels in themselves and that makes them uh, I think a great partner because as you as a partner feel like your partner is hearing you and is mm -hmm. feeling for you and with you I think that can create a lot of uh, relief and it can create a lot of intimacy and connection well, compared I think, yeah. to you know, Two lions can mm -hmm. do very well together mm -hmm. because, as they you can. said, both both sort of relating to each other's relating way each of other. being. Yes, that is very powerful, and I think empathy is a strong quality that lions can get to a little quicker mm -hmm. than, say, unicorns get to. Now, again, mm -hmm. both both um, temperaments can arrive at any and will arrive and do arrive at any human um, you know state of consciousness and empathy is one of them and anger is one of them and mm -hmm. you know so on so any feeling state is accessible to either character what I'm, I think we're saying is lions spend more time mm -hmm. in an empathetic state mm -hmm. than maybe a, a unicorn does where unicorns quite often times when they are sort of seeking comfort, they're sort of 
shutting down yeah. feeling, and they're oftentimes not uh, connecting. They're just it's like it's like a they, spockish. They go cold. Yeah, we call it the spock. <laughs> so, so empathy. So empathy is one of their mm -hmm. qualities. Mm -hmm. um, being a good, being a comfortable communicator. Yes, is one of their great qualities, which makes them great leaders, in my opinion. If if they have let's say they're shit under control, mm -hmm. um, it makes them comfortable in leadership positions. They can be, mm -hmm. they can be comfortable taking leadership position. Yes. And, and as long as, again, they keep being self-critical, mm -hmm. they can do a great job at leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and two lions in a relationship together can be very successful because, again, both can empathize with each other's position but they can also be quite volatile so you got two people who are used to externalizing all their thoughts and seeking uh comfort by you know taking it from the other person and, and demanding it you do also have a lot of space to create big reactivity big um drama mm -hmm. uh big emotional you know states so i think that those things have to be really managed well if you're going to have two lions together a lion with a unicorn the biggest challenge of course is that if i'm used to externalizing if i'm used to you know moving forward and confronting all the time and sort of demanding to be comforted mm -hmm. demanding to resolve this demanding to be heard and uh, wanting to get this mm -hmm. out in the open, it can oftentimes place you in a state of, if you're a unicorn, of feeling constantly pursued mm -hmm. and feeling pressure, pressure. Yes. and feeling um, that, you know, there's always something to be deal, uh, dealing with, with or yeah. dealt with or, yeah. or resolved. And, and, mm -hmm. and, a lot, and unicorns really do value quiet. Mm -hmm. They value a, a silence and stillness and peace and, and peace. <laughs> and yeah. and mm -hmm. they're not as they're not as comfortable mm -hmm. and they're not as familiar internally mm -hmm. with chaos. Mm -hmm. So they have a much more controlled environment externally and in internally. Mm -hmm. So now let's transition over to the unicorn mm -hmm. to talk about how we describe a unicorn and let's talk about the qualities that can that can be you know the worst mm -hmm. and the best mm -hmm. variations of this temperament. Yeah. Okay. So you want to start with uh, sure. the how you would describe a unicorn? Yeah. Cuz I had many unicorns in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did I did my fair share of of tries based on being a lion. I thought that uh, opposites attract each other and having someone who would listen to me and obey it's, is, is the way to go, but that didn't work and it really triggered me. So what triggers me as a lion and how I would describe a unicorn is, is that um, avoidance, the constant avoidance of either talking about things or uh, physically um, expressing emotions um, and that everything would just take so long in a way that the internal process about uh, processing and, and figuring out how they feel, uh, how they feel like about arriving, something, arriving at a, at, at at a, a conclusion, conclusion in yeah. a way that is, is a quality in a unicorn that um, disturbs me as a lion obviously <laughs> right, right for you for you that can mm -hmm. you can you run out of a certain amount of patience, patience for that yes yeah. I'm, I'm not patient with that or with someone like that and uh, that can obviously create reactions um, on my end then so I think avoidance is something that really comes up for me mm -hmm. um, well as you a mean quality. so you mean as a negative quality as a negative quality okay. yes and with the avoidance um, shutting also someone out of their life, so just being cold, uh, which again goes back to not, not being emotional, not feeling emotions, not expressing emotions. Um, 
and then everything is so vague, uh, very vague in the sense of uh, if they don't put something maybe on paper after a few weeks, you are left with assumptions uh, because the unicorn is taking all that time to process mm -hmm. uh, their emotions and then become very logical about how they feel about a situation. Right, mm -hmm. so a unicorn can retreat inside mm -hmm. and stay inside and really never get to a place where you can be resolved. They can get to a place where they're resolved because yeah. basically the tension has gone away. So one of the worst qualities that mm -hmm. a unicorn can develop mm -hmm. is a strategy of putting something off or avoiding something until it basically just kind of dies out and you know you're no longer pursuing uh, some satisfaction from mm -hmm. it uh, you're no longer pursuing the answer mm -hmm. and they're no longer ha feeling pursued mm -hmm. to get it yeah. um, this can be one of the most you know I think exacerbating qualities of the unicorn mm -hmm. and what you mentioned earlier being passive-aggressive Throughout different, it, mm -hmm. th these has being passive aggressive has obviously different faces. One that I mentioned is just cutting people out of their lives, uh, or maybe they actually do say something, but they they say it in German. We would say they say it through a flower, so they make it sound uh, pretty, but the intention behind what they're saying is is to actually hurt you, but they're just not saying it. So. Mm -hmm. Right. There, there's a lot of there's again. I also notice one of the one of the patterns in unicorns is the way they talk around a subject mm -hmm. rather than the talking. Vagary. Yeah, uh -huh. they can be quite vague mm -hmm. um, in in their conversations. So they can they can because well, what they're looking for is to say the exact right thing. Mm -hmm. So they can control how you respond to what they say. Mm -hmm. So it's all control. And Manipulation. Again, yes, and the, the lion way. and the lion has you know the lion's trying to control the situation as well by you know uh, by using their 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 skillful use of you know of, of words and and communication. Yes. They're mm -hmm. trying to mm -hmm. you know get you oftentimes uh, kind of uh, you know as we say in the world of horse training get you corralled in a direction mm -hmm. over here get you mm -hmm. you know moving that way mm -hmm. into this particular corral um, so I think you know it's just two different stra strategies or approaches. approaches so the unicorn approach is uh, you know hey I kind of want to make sure I control you by mm -hmm. making sure I say things to you the way uh, the way I imagine y you want to hear them so you don't overreact mm -hmm. And the lion is like, I'm going to say things to you the way that, uh, you know, I think they need to be said. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to put this on the table and I'm going to I'm going to make sure that you in a way, you know, you hear me and uh, whether you uh, I don't you know, I'm not concerned about how you react because. I'm just as reactive, so mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, let's, let's do this. I'm yeah. ready to confront that. Yeah. And the unicorn's like, okay, I'm going to control this person by being clever and mm -hmm. indirect. Mm -hmm. So they both have approaches. They're very different approaches. And mm -hmm. as you said, in a relationship, if you're a lion trying to be in a relationship with the unicorn and you're noticing that they're very indirect and you're like, okay, what's your point? What are you trying to say mm -hmm. right now? And it's like, well, um, I want to break up. I mean, you know, <laughs> inevitably, it might be, you know, th that might be the classic unicorn delivery of, listen. Um, Remember five years ago? Yeah, and, and <laughs> oh well, and there's another interesting quality. Mm. Unicorns really, really, really love to hold on. Mm, and dwell. And dwell and mm. not let go of things that have injured them, either emotionally, um, you know, or somehow you know psychologically mm -hmm. they, they they do have they do have a tendency to to be to to get stuck mm -hmm. with things yeah. and lions tend to have less of a tendency to get stuck uh because they just sort of they just sort of let out pressure mm -hmm. you know along that uh, you know kind of like a teapot mm -hmm. as it builds mm -hmm. but they also then tend to have that overreactivity they're just incredibly yeah. overreactive which yeah. is very intense for 
uh, not only another lion or a unicorn, but anybody when someone's like, you know, incredibly reactive. Mm-hmm. So you've got this one person who's incredibly reactive, this other person who's um, incredibly passive, mm-hmm. uh, one person who won't let go of something, another person who just, you know, won't let go of not letting go. <laughs> you know, so, mm-hmm. so they have very different ways of dealing with mm-hmm. things. What would you consider some of the best qualities of the unicorn? Uh, I think unicorns, um, from my own experience, are great listeners because they do take their time to process. Uh, Prior to that, they obviously have to take in information, which is the listening process. So as a unicorn, I think they do bring the quality of being good listeners and uh, because I feel they don't become as emotional and reactive. Um, they obviously also offer great solutions, logical, reasonable solutions. So mm-hmm. you're suggesting that they can stay more cerebral mm-hmm. and less limbic. Mm-hmm. Lions tend to become limbic in like I can, you know, both of these guys are working with sort of an emotional capacity, yes. a container that they exist within. Yeah. And again, each person is different because it's a subjective mm-hmm. issue we're talking about. So my, my emotional capacity or threshold or container is different than yours. But when you deal with the lion, what you're dealing with is a person who is is when they express themselves their expression tends to be you know an ex- big external expression mm-hmm. that that can be that can be uh, contained skillfully mm-hmm. and expressed skillfully or can be a, a massive blowout mm-hmm. the unicorn will contain their emotional you know, uh, their emotional container can also, of course, vary. Yeah. And when, but I, I think it's very important to say that unicorns can be incredibly emotionally explosive as well. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we think, oh, only lions are emotionally explosive. Mm-hmm. But the reality is unicorns are also emotionally explosive. It takes more to get them typically to an mm-hmm. emotionally externally explosive space but when they get there it's quite big well because even that is part of their process of just burying and stagging uh pain feelings, frustration and, and memories, feelings yes. uh, over the course of a longer time so when they have their big reaction it's because there has been a long time and many occasions that have created the distress well, for but this them. is my point with the mm-hmm. lion too mm-hmm. is because the lion keeps letting it out yes with these little you know mm-hmm. small bursts and the unicorn keeps holding it in mm-hmm. containing it containing it yeah. and my point being that by the time it's time by the time you've reached the threshold the container is mm-hmm. full, mm-hmm. you're going to get a reaction from a mm-hmm. unicorn that looks exactly like a lion. Mm-hmm. It's just that the lion is, uh, mm. you know, they are mm-hmm. in, you know, they really are just being externally reactive in small bursts yeah. repeatedly. Unicorn is containing repeatedly because they're both actually, this is how they're both dealing with the stress. Mm-hmm. They're both dealing with this. Uh, tension one is containing one is releasing but at the end of the day they're both after the same outcome which is peace Mm -hmm. they both are in search of tension relief yes peace of of tension relief which is give me peace yeah so uh, I think it's very interesting that the unicorn's quality is as you said great listener Mm -hmm. Whereas the lion sometimes is not a great listener. They, mm-hmm. they, they're really quite often in, more interested in being heard. Yes, because they're busy with their own stuff. Right. <laughs> so uh, unicorns are great listeners. Great at 
as you said, problem solving because they spend more time internally that state of working mind. with mm -hmm. problems internally. And they also can, I think, be very, um, I think they can, they can be very rational, as you said, people mm -hmm. as well. They stay in that, they stay in that non-reactive, non-limbic state for longer, mm -hmm. so they're typically more they're typically more logical about mm -hmm. something, yeah. whereas the lion is typically more emotional mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, the, the two really are interesting. They're two very interesting characters. They mm -hmm. have very interesting but very unique approaches to mm -hmm. dealing with stress, with anxiety, with fear. And for them to coexist together is really what makes life interesting. It's the dis there's so much to discover when you are a lion and you're in mm -hmm. some kind of relationship with a unicorn mm -hmm. and vice versa when you're a unicorn in some kind of relationship with a lion two unicorns in a relationship the worst you know sort of version of that is that nobody deals with anything mm -hmm. and I, I can i add to that because sure. this is something that's been on my mind for a while now as you're speaking we need to remember also that when we're talking about the worst qualities of a lion or of a unicorn, or when they're very reactive and emotional, it is because they are underdeveloped in the sense of their critical thinking uh, about situations or underdeveloped in the capacity of their emotional threshold and uh, being in distress. So... No, well, you, yeah, you hit mm -hmm. it right there. It's like... When I'm in distress, yes. this is when my critical thinking and my emotional awareness, my emotional mm -hmm. maturity, my, emo my emotional capacity, this is when it gets tested. This is when it gets tested, exactly. And this is also now your example of two unicorns being in a relationship. If these are two unicorns that's, who haven't done any personal work or two lions who haven't done any personal work, this is when each of them will show up with the worst qualities. And same for, if I think about my past, when I had chosen unicorns to be around with, I myself was an underdeveloped lion. They were underdeveloped unicorns. So neither him nor I were growing from that experience um, in, in emotional capacities or in, in my, my communication skills because I was just being me and he was just being him, and it just didn't work out because we didn't do the work that it required. Well, you, did, you didn't even know, you really, at this point, as we talk about in here quite often, you didn't know what you didn't know you didn't know. Exactly. It's like, how do I know that there are, that there are tools? Yes, massive blind spots. Right, how, massive how would, blind spots. How would I know yes. there are tools yeah. that I can use to make a difference in his life and my life yeah. and our life make this work in correct mm -hmm. and so for me it, this brings us back to basically why we even have mind science as yeah. part of our educational you know curriculum it's because mind science is about having real tools mm -hmm. to apply to these complex problems of these are basically uh these are emotional puzzles mm -hmm. that we have to to solve quite often and we need tools to help us because if you're going to learn a handstand it helps if you have tools to learn that handstand uh and it's the same over here in Question. the right in 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 the realm of personal development so for us when we reach into our toolbox we look for the tool of necessary versus unnecessary mm -hmm you know, relative versus absolute, um, lion versus unicorn. Mm -hmm. And we use our critical thinking, which is our magnifying glass. That's, you know, we, 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 we get out our magnifying glass, which is our critical thinking, and we put it down. And then we, we you know, we want to observe the problem through the critical thinking. And we decide once we look, we go, mm, is this going to require necessary versus unnecessary? Mm -hmm. Is this going to require fixed versus fluid? Mm -hmm. What tool am I going to help to mm -hmm. adjust or change or solve whatever problem I'm observing through 
this yeah. magnifying glass. And the beauty of it is also that you can cross apply it between the movement practice and mm -hmm. the the living arts because I can see myself being a lion in my movement practice as I can see myself being a lion in, in a romantic, intimate relationship. And I can see myself five years ago when I got introduced to martial arts and how I would react back then. I would feel overwhelmed. I, I would feel aggressive. Uh, I would get very, very emotional. Um, and it just reminded me, or the feeling that I had reminded me of being in a situation with someone who was uh, either over talking me or where I didn't feel like I could be where you my felt you felt a loss of control yes mm -hmm. so uh, this this is what I really love about this practice that like you said each toolbox can be applied to so many different arenas and platforms of our life and uh, especially to me martial arts is 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 the biggest um, how do you say that mm. For example, if I think about the pressure game in martial arts, I can relate to that uh, it's a, because it's, a beautiful it's metaphor. my nature. It's a metaphor. Yeah. It's anecdotes. It's, it's because pressure feels natural to me. Uh, versus, for example, when I started with uh, BJJ in a gi, I felt that I was being controlled and it would drive me crazy. So I could see myself in all these places and I was like, oh, look, there's me again. Oh, look, there's me. There's my reaction. And then having the tools to step away from that emotional reaction, like, okay, so what, what can I do from here now with what I learned and um, the concepts that are maybe intellectualized first, then to embody them in every moment. Yeah, I think what people don't understand sometimes is how the brain actually, you know, how it behaves as, as, as an organ, what its job is and how it, how it because it has, it has this very specific way in which it operates in order to preserve life. Mm -hmm. So when you're in danger, at least even perceived danger, mm -hmm. the brain automatically, you know, it, you have this limbic hijacking that occurs. So the limbic system takes over and, and robs the prefrontal lobes and critical thought of control. Mm -hmm. And then it, you're now in a state of, of, of basic fight or flight, an emotional mm -hmm. state, which means you're not thinking, you're, be, you're reacting. Mm -hmm. you, you're, you're preserving yourself. This is how we, this is how we deal with each other when we don't feel safe in a moment. Mm -hmm. And it's so crucial if we're going to see ourselves grow and thrive and find happiness, we're going to have to learn to quickly return from the emotional state, from the limbic state, back to the critical thinking state, mm -hmm. which is as an example, if you are in a car accident, uh, and you're going into shock, the first thing that the paramedic or the police officer might ask you is, hey, what is your name? What's yeah. your phone number? What is your address? Where do you live? They're trying to get you back into the prefrontal lobe, mm -hmm. sort of you know, thinking state, and out of this emotional state where you're literally in fight or flight and mm -hmm. you're based or, fr or have frozen. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, being in shock from something that is traumatic. So the human mind it, it doesn't have to be in a car accident to be in shock it could be it could literally just be in a state where it's unfamiliar with the landscape that yeah. it's that it's currently occupying it doesn't know to where to go, whether to go left or right like it, it's like oh my god i've never i've never had someone yell at me or i've never had someone react this mm -hmm. way to me mm -hmm. i've never had someone get so upset so mm -hmm. i don't know how to react mm -hmm. and this is very common especially when lions are trying to deal with unicorns and unicorns with lions because you know a lion is looking at a unicorn maybe in a state of non-reaction and mm -hmm. they don't know how to react to that mm -hmm. they're just staring at that like you know <laughs> say something you yeah. know g g feed me something here yeah. and so both can really feed off each other's worst qualities, worst qualities. they can yeah. feed off each other's you know uh, least developed, developed qualities mm -hmm. And they can be in really difficult states where they just don't know how to uh, communicate and how to resolve mm -hmm. 
what is ultimately misunderstanding. Yeah. Ultimately, is I just don't understand you. Just a different way, almost like or, a different or language. Or you know what? I do yeah. understand you. I actually do understand how you see this, mm -hmm. and I don't agree with you. And I don't actually yeah. know how to deal with the fact that we see this mm -hmm. so differently. Mm -hmm. And now I can't really find peace because I can't accept that you see the world this way and I see the world that way. And mm -hmm. I'm actually, I may have to come to terms with the fact that we're just not compatible. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. another huge distressful thing for a person yes. to deal with. Yes. So there are a lot of things that can cause us to be, you know, to find difficulty or distress in, in, you know, the, 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 the journey, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of discovery through mm -hmm. Lion and Unicorn. But mm -hmm. I think that gives, you know, gives you guys a little something to, to sort of just, just explore and mm -hmm. discover from the conversation. You will read the book and you will have your own, you know, time to sit down and, and, and do your own work, your own self analysis, your own discovery around the relationships you've developed. You know, was your father or mother mm -hmm. a unicorn, mm -hmm. uh, brothers and sisters? How many relationships have you been in? Do you have a tendency to choose lions over unicorns, unicorns over lions? Once you sit down and do that work, you will discover a lot of things and you'll be able to better, um, I think, wrap your head around this this tool and how you'll use this tool. Because again, it's just mm -hmm. one of many tools yeah. that you will you know, use on the, on the journey of uh, self-adjustment and uh, self-discovery. Yeah, and I think what's important too is that you don't judge yourself for who you are between these characters because I think what happened for me originally too was it was more of a wishful thinking. I was like, I, I want to be a unicorn. I don't want to feel all of these big reactions and hurt people and, and be that woman. Uh, so, so I was, I think, in a way lying to myself um, and in the hopes that I, I would even get relief in that moment from myself um, by, by assigning the unicorn character to me. So I think in, in that process, it's important yeah, that you don't judge yourself, but you also don't judge anyone in your life that is close to you who is maybe a very big lion or a big unicorn, uh, and big especially in the sense of underdeveloped, they're doing the best they can, um, and they maybe don't have the tools that you have now. Um, uh, yeah, can I add, can I insert something course. right there, which is... Of course, lion. Yes, of course. <laughs> which is, if you... Interrupting yeah, is also that's, that's one quality. To do. <laughs> and, and, and if you are a lion, please be empathetic. To the unicorn because the same way that it's difficult for you to contain mm -hmm. your need to get what you need mm -hmm. the same thing it's difficult for that unicorn to express something when they're so uh they're so used to for lack of a better word they're mm -hmm. just used to holding and containing and you're used to releasing. And so the same way that they have a, a pattern, the same way you have a pattern, mm -hmm. they have a pattern. And so empathy is understanding that it's just as difficult for them to express as it is for you to contain and vice versa. Yes. So <clears throat> that's how you understand each other. That's how you forgive each other. That's how you hold space for each other. That's how you find empathy for each other all about recognizing that the other person is going through the same thing you are mm -hmm. but in just in a, 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 a just almost like you know you know if it's it's a, if it's right side up now it's upside down it's mm -hmm. just that's all it is is converse so if if you can if you can really wrap your head around that you can find a lot of forgiveness a lot of love a mm -hmm. lot of beauty you can find it in that relationship where it has been frustration, it has been alienation, it has been a sense of, you know, we just don't, we're just so different, we don't get each other. You are different. Yeah. You have a completely different approach. You see things differently. That is completely you and it's normal and that's what makes the relationship rich. It can make the relationship extremely fruitful and you shouldn't be 
dissuaded to be in a relationship with someone who does have a different approach than you. It's all about understanding where you guys have common ground mm -hmm. and what you both have common ground on are your values. Mm -hmm. You can value the same things, but have different approaches toward expressing those values. Mm -hmm. We value many of the same things, but we have a different way of approaching those values. It's when you don't value the same things, it's when you don't share similar values or ethics, that's when a relationship is probably not going to be successful. Yeah. So guys, thank you for you know, uh, tuning you know, in for this Mind Science lecture, and uh, it's time to get to your homework, and uh, we'll see you uh, for the next lecture. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you.